Okay, welcome to our year 10 lesson. Welcome to our art lesson on artist research. Today, we're going to start off with a silent starter and recap on the knowledge of SEMI, which you would have covered in years eight and years nine. So with your shoulder partner, the first task is going to be identifying what each of these letters stand for in the SEMI acronym that we use. So S-E-M-I, what that means, and then giving an example of something you might use when describing the work of artists. So with your shoulder partners now, have a little bit of a recap on our prior learning about what SEMI stands for, what it means, and giving an example. In today's lesson, we are going to be developing our artist research and you are going to understand how to create an artist research page for assessment objective one. The aim is by the end of this week, you'll be able to understand why artist research is important in our course. You'll be able to research and analyze the work of artists using our semi-analysis, which we now know stands for subject elements, media and intent and also be able to create emulations and also pastiches, which is part of our faculty vision to plan, create and evaluate. We'll also try and be developing our creative skills as well by considering lettering styles and font styles and also enhancing the overall presentation of your research. Today's keywords in this lesson are going to be our acronym SEMI, emulation and pastiche. So for assessment objective one, you are developing your ideas through investigations formed through contextual and other sources. But in a nutshell, that is you looking at, analyzing and annotating about the work of artists that you see around you. And those could be painters, those could be photographers. It could be um, something that you read in a book that's inspired you. So it could come from a range of different sources and craftspeople. In the boxes on the screen, you can now see rough grade descriptors for how that artist's research equates to a grade. So using the language from the exam board, we see words like minimal, moderate, consistent, and highly developed. And it's that language that we use when we mark your work as well. So for instance, for a grade three to four, a student will develop artist research showing a moderate ability they can sometimes explain how the artist has created their work and also link in the influences with their own projects and their own ideas. Whereas if you have a look at the top band with the sevens, eights and nines, this goes from highly developed to exceptional ability. And a student of this ability will be able to create a range of artist research using analytical and creative skills, which include both pastiches and emulations. You'll also be able to confidently understand the artist's work and use that work as a springboard to inspire further thoughts and highly skilled studies. What I would like you to do now is have a look at this video. These are some video scans of examples of artist research that have been done with us in previous years. They are a range of different abilities, but as you watch this video, I'd like to pick out some of the strengths that you find within these. So what makes a successful artist research? What skills, knowledge and understanding are important to generate such an example? So have a look. We also have some physical examples on the desk for you to look at today from prior students. And there are also some moderated samples too. Now that you've had the opportunity to look at some examples of artist research, we are now going to direct your thoughts to the work of Christy Patterson. Christy Patterson is an artist that uses a variety of different everyday objects, which links nicely with our project that we've started since September. She works on a variety of different surfaces, mostly book pages. She picks out a keyword that reflects some of the images that she does and then creates watercolored overlap studies on the top of these pages. Have a look at the six examples on the screen at the moment. With your shoulder partner, discuss which one do you think is the most successful and why that is the case. Okay, so we're now going to start planning 
our artist research. And here are some criteria that you'll see from the examples we've studied earlier this lesson, and just to reiterate them now. So when looking at an artist's research page, I will need a clear title of the artist's name. It's signposts to the moderator about who you're researching and why you're doing them. I'd also like to see printed images of the artist's work. Avoid tiny thumbnail images. You want images that you can see, that you perhaps draw over, collage into, or just pretend, it's just present so that you can see a very clear example of the artist's work. You'll also be able to complete that in-depth analysis and you can use the semi worksheets to help guide you talking about subject elements, media and intent within the artist's work. I would love to see your own thoughts and opinions of the artwork as well. well what are its strengths? What do you find interesting? What are your thoughts on that? I'd like to see how you can explain how this artist links with your project and theme. So rather than just being uh, creating artist research, you're saying, I'm doing this because, this links with my work because, this is going to help me with my project because. You'll also want to evident in your work, in your artist research, you'd like to evidence examples of emulations. Now, emulations are direct copies of the artist's work. So taking a piece of their work and copying this. This will help you build your understanding skills and knowledge in how the piece was created and develop your artistic skills further. Pastiches are harder and more challenging. And that is because they become imitations of the artwork. So they will take elements of that artist's work, but then they'll also take your own influences and your own thoughts. So when you create a pastiche, you're taking parts of their work, but going in your own style. And that again is what I'd see, particularly with my able, gifted and talented. And then finally, the whole thing needs to be presented using those visual communication skills that you developed in year seven, eight, and nine. I need to see clear visual presentation and skill in the way that you create your work, i.e. using black pen to annotate and annotating neatly or typing where possible. A good layout that follows the style of the artist. So in the Jim Golden example on the right-hand side of the screen, you can see that the student has taken influence from some of his earlier pieces in the top left corner and picked out the oranges and reds and used the oranges and reds in the background, but also backed some of the work on the blue to pick up the accent color. So it's very carefully orchestrated and it's that level of consideration that will enhance your visual communication skills. On the desk, you will all have access to the semi-analysis worksheets. Use these to help guide you through this process of artist research, of collecting the images, of creating the annotation, of writing it carefully up, and then getting creative with your emulations and pastiches and adding your own thoughts and opinions. And there are lots of keywords and sentence starters to guide you on this journey. Finally, to finish today, I'm going to show you some examples of GCSE artist research pages on a larger scale. Note that these were done on A3 books, but I will let you know if there's any changes in terms of layout and presentation. This first one is the work of Charles Bett on a double spread. And you can see examples of his work, annotation, title, clear visual communication, very good use of color, emulations within the pieces as well. Here is the work of Lynn Hirschman. Looking at body image, I can see evidence of her work evidence of the artist emulations, evidence of the students' pastiches as well, that is annotated, and it also links very clearly with the artist style, with the use of the tape measure, the safety pins, etc., that really bring a good, clear understanding from the student about the artist that she's studying. Here is another example of the work of Jenny Savile. So we've got these gaudy colours, these bright hot pinks and blues, against this turquoise and black and it's done so to make it look more rustic and flesh-like a bit like how she paints her pieces so again visual communication that clear link with the artist's work and the emulations which you can see on the left and the right annotation follows through and a clear title explains the artist's work here is another example so this again, another student researching an artist. This is a photographer. So examples of the artist's work. Then there's further samples of their own work inspired by the artist with some thumbnails. Annotation throughout, 
key words highlighted that really pick apart the layout of these pages and very neatly presented. So what I would like you to think about this lesson is start to plan together your aims for this artist research page. Today, you might collect some key information, you might go on the computers, you might add a title, you might consider your background, and then you will need to develop this further as homework for today.